Hi everyone, this is my f this is the first instalment in my coverage of the Harlem Line Rosen TSW2. Of course, as you might know, it's a brand new add-on that was only released this morning. Uh, it in only includes the 24 mile section between Grand Central and North White Plains, but even though it's very short, I like to think I'll still enjoy it in some ways. So for this first video, we're just going to play the shortest scenario that comes with the pack, called Snow Globe Trotters. Although I would have preferred to call it Harlem Globe Trotters myself. Looks like we were driving the older Bud M3A on a what it labels as a non-revenue service from North White Plains. So let's get into it. Uh, of course, this is the strange-looking artwork for the March Madness sale. The way they've done the, you know, that was very quick. All right. So what do we have to do? Uh, it's one of those things where it starts with that really strange cinematic camera. I don't mind the snow effects, although they could look a little better. Okay, welcome to North White Plains Yard. Take this 12-car M3A down to Mount Vernon West Yard before separating it into a six-car train ready for the morning service. It's very early to be doing, to be setting things up on this network. Well, that's the way it is, I suppose. Now, this is the, this is of course the M3A, and over there is an M7A, there's another M3A. These are of course very, very similar to the basic M3 and M7 units that you get on the Long Island Railroad. And the first thing I've noticed is that the LIRR M3, for some reason, has got a uh, set of seats right here behind the, uh, behind these door controls. Unfortunately, that's not present on this Metro North version. Well, the seating is certainly different in terms of its colour. Mm, not sure what to make of the 3x2 layout, but anyway, that's not really why we're here. Alright, set the master keys in. Of course, we have to set this lot up before we do anything else. So we go forward. Looks like it's a broadly similar setup process to the Long Island Railroad units. Oh. <laughs> okay, so I've charged the brakes before I should have done. Headlights to bright and the marker lights to off. Uh, in New Zealand we call marker lights tail lights. So wait a minute, press and hold it. I've already done that! Apply some power to get moving. I will, but first, before we do, I will give you a demonstration on what the horn sounds like. That is a massive improvement over the original LIRR horns. Because I think it was just the same recording for both M3 uh, that was. Was it? Because I think Dovetail reused the, M th the horn recording from the M7 on the M3, and I thought that was rather lazy, but... Good thing they haven't made that same mistake here. And I see they've remembered that the external... Wait a minute. That signal's... Oh, that point was set the wrong way. How can... Okay, how did that let us through when the points were set against us? I... There's a lot of things I don't understand about this game. <laughs> that thing with the screwy points is probably one of them. Right, so the main reason why I wanted to get this route is... Because for the simple reason that I really do like American commuter trains. Even though my preference is mainly, specifically for the services that... Uh, what's an example? Uh, the New Mexico, perhaps the New Mexico Rail Runner Express in obviously New Mexico or possibly Sunrail in Florida. I'm more used to those sorts of services that use locomotives running like push pull consists. You know, you know, we have like the locomotive, maybe like two to twelve coaches and a cab car, that sort of thing. Not really used to these kinds of services that use multi that actually use multiple units. Mind you, I do I have had the Long Island Railroad add-on for a fair while, so 
I should be familiar with this sort of thing. And all the New Jersey Transit stuff in Train Simulator. Although I think the only NJT multiple unit in Train Simulator is the Arrow 3. But correct me if I'm wrong. Right, so this, I'm guessing this station would be North White Plains itself. And I do apologise for the subpar frame rates, it is quite, it does tend to be pretty inconsistent uh, in this game. Although I think, that I, I'm hoping that at the very least it will improve to about maybe 30 FPS as we go along. So, I'm not surprised. Right, so I did have a look at the instructions before we started before I started this recording and it's basically saying that we've got to take that consist out of North White Plains, then take it down to Mount Vernon West and then split the consist. But I think because that little info screen that popped up at the start, that said it was a this was a 12 car consist. And so from what I can tell, when we get to Mount Vernon East, no Mount Vernon West. East of New Haven line. Um, we then have to split the consist and then we just go as an eight car train as far as well, the neck where we end the scenario of Crestwood. This is all very this this route is completely new to me, but in other words I basically don't know any of the station names aside from the Grand Central and how we want to the streets. And I think even Fordham uh, main, I'm mainly familiar with the section that we've already seen in Train Simulator on, as part of that New York to New Haven route, which did, of course, in that instance, Dovetail did include the, for want of a better term, branch off of New Rochelle to go down to, well, that goes down to Grand Central. Excuse me. And at least back then, they actually acknowledged the existence of the Kawasaki M8 unit by including it in the game. Yet, for whatever reason, in this TSW version, uh, they decided to acknowledge the existence of the Kawasaki M8 and the New Haven line by pretending they don't exist and brushing over any mention of them. Because that's not annoying in the slightest. And, of course, as it stands now, the route is, is extremely realistic with just the M3A and M7A, no M8, nor P32 ACDMs and Shoreliner coaches. Seriously, Dovetail, get your bloody act together. I'm absolutely tired of you lot always leaving out certain route, or certain extensions like branch lines and extra motor power for seemingly no reason. What is your game? Anyway, speaking of questions, what is this station? No, it's just something called White Plains. I would have called, I would have, I wonder why it's, it's not simply called South White Plains. Oh, well, one other station I've seen that's on this route is uh, it's called Scarsdale, and that got me thinking, because I'm, I'm wondering if that's the same Scarsdale that they reference, that Donald Fagan references in the lyrics of the Stephen Dan song, K-19. Although I'm not sure why I just referenced a song that I don't particularly like, although actually it's because of the connection with Scarsdale. I'll tell you what, this uh, third rail, the way they've set up this third rail is quite interesting because it's not the sort of thing that I'm used to. It, it, it looks like, it looks very similar to what the Long Island Railroad uses, but don't quote me on that. A, yeah, it looks like a side or top contact system. It's definitely, yeah, it's definitely distinctly different from what you have in southern England and Merseyside, and by extension London, London and Glasgow and underground as well. Because, I mean, i tell you what really does remind me, this system really does remind me of, the, the old line between Manchester, Victoria and Barron, uh, as it was before it got converted into a Metrolink tram line in the 90s. That used to be like from about 1959 to 1991, that the service was run by the class 504 the news. And that kind of side contact third rail, where it was at 1200 volt DC instead of the regular 700, uh, 750, was unique 
into that particular line, at least in the UK. Although, the main reason why I'm talking about semi-irrelevant topics is because, uh, in all honesty, I know absolutely nothing about the Harlem line, it's like service practices and what the area is like. And it's not like you're getting a really good introduction to it here because obviously you can barely see anything since I ended up picking an early morning service. Mind you, the only, the only reason I went for this particular run is because it's the shortest scenario of the bunch. Because the longest, I think, is about 90 minutes. And not even I have the patience to sit through a run that long. I'm going to call it Owen Hartsdale. Everyone knows that bit. Well, more power to you. Although I would have, I don't know why it's spelt without an E. It's a bit because I don't, I don't think Ann Wilson would be happy. Anyway, one thing I, I'll tell you one thing I do remember is that is mainly on the section between Grand Central and I think it's Woodlawn, um, which is shared with the New Haven line, is that. On those occasions where I have driven the, co the Metro North M8 on that section, I'll just actually call it I'm just making a note to remind myself to put in a card for the for an M8 video in the top right corner. So I remember those times where I've driven like the M8 or P32 ACDM gets even FL9, if you want to go back that far, out of Grand Central. Uh, I remember going through a lot of these little stations between GCT and Fordham, no, Woodlawn, and they were, a lot of them had relatively short platforms, and the only one on that section that I remember stopping at was Fordham, uh, which if I'm not mistaken is spelt F, just F-O-R-D-H-A-M, and uh, Yes, yeah, so I remember initially wondering why there's so many small stations on the section that the Metro North train or the New Haven services don't stop at, and now I know why. Mind you, I knew about the Harlem line long before I found out it was going to train to the world. And, so, and this is uh, Scarsdale, which is fitting because I was just, before I recorded and started recording this video, I was just watching a bit, like a rail fanning video of trains at the real Scarsdale station. Speaking of rail fanning along this, in this area, uh, I did once watch I think it was Transit Fan Productions video about Fordham Station, and I intended to, intended to also make a rail fanning video at Fordham, but of course on TSW and minus the M8. Again, dovetail. Why did you not include the M8, even just as AI? I have noted. I mean, what I have noticed from looking through the list of timetable mode services is that they don't appear to have provided any representation of the uh, New Haven services. Although interestingly, they have provided some representation of the Hudson line because, for whatever reason, Dovetail decided to include the little spur off to Yankees East 153rd Street. <coughs> Excuse me. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the start of the. That's just past the start of the Hudson Line, and it was present on the old train simulator New York to Haven route. Something else I've just realised, I don't know if anyone else has thought of this, but it is a huge missed opportunity. What Dovetail could have done with this Harlem Line route is add the extended extend off of Woodlawn to include that whole section through to New Rochelle, on the Northeast Corridor, and then that could link up with the old NEC New York route, which was, I think that was just New Rochelle to Newark International Airport. So you could link, so that could have been a way of bringing that route back into TSW2, because for whatever reason, it was never added to the preserved collection, and instead the ACS 64 and Amfleet cars came back with the Boston Sprinter route. Incidentally, it's one of my favourite US roads, despite the boring AI. Yeah, let's see what the station is. This is Oh, so we're doing a round trip. Because yeah, it says 
I, I thought Crestwood would be south of Mount Vernon West. But if anything, that just goes to show you how I'm basically a complete novice when it comes to like geographical knowledge of this area. So it looks like we'll be splitting the concert, splitting this train when we get to Mount Vernon West. So it's currently 12 car concert. It's currently a 12 car concert that we're heading to. And we'll be reducing it to, to uh, six coach, or separating it into two six car concerts. And then I'm guessing that we'll be taking the the rear half, the northern half essentially, back up the line towards Crestwood. Hello, what's going on here? This is. This, this is. Apologies if I pronounced that wrong, but I wouldn't have thought that Dovetail would have done this. Because this is like what I've seen at footage, some videos about stations on the NEC that the M8s stop at. These are like a setup, they put it here in between the two tracks I believe, and if they need to like close one of the tracks for maintenance, I'm pretty sure they block out, they build like some board or whatever over top the track to connect the, the normal platform with these basic little steps. And I have seen footage of M8s stopping there, and for some reason the game just cut to that, or we'll briefly cut back to the loading screen. Although, I mean it did that when I was doing pump, that humble to Lubeck run earlier, and I'm really quite confused as to why it's doing that all of a sudden, but ordinarily it doesn't happen. Wow, look, it's the next station. I know that Bronxville is, isn't it like a borough of New York, like the Bronx, you know, but like uh, Manhattan, well, no, uh, we've got, is, it, is Manhattan a borough or just an island, I don't remember, but I know that um, besides that you've got like Harlem, the Bronx, like Brooklyn, Queens. And I think though that's it for like boroughs of New York City, but please do print me again, please do print me if I'm wrong. Um, I know that well, from what I've seen of his videos, I'm pretty sure Transit Fan Productions is a New Yorker, so perhaps he could perhaps he could I don't know if enlighten us is the right word, but perhaps he could inform us on what I've got wrong if it comes to like any boroughs or whether I've remembered them or not. Mac! I will say no more. Oh, I suppose you could call it Mick Fleetwood, but that wouldn't work as, I don't think that would work as well. Now, it's quite curious, I, I just noticed this little bit of detail where you've got the, uh, this, this snow packed up underneath the platforms, and I'm just thinking, oh, does this happen, does this sort of thing happen in real life? I wonder. As I've said, mind you, I think the way the platforms in New Zealand are designed, they don't really, it's like a solid foundation, it's not like spindly concrete supports. Um, incidentally, I checked in the works, uh, oh wait, I'm so confused. Right, so that's fleet, so I'm going to go with fleet, so that leads me to think that the next stop is uh, Mount Vernon West. Although, if it's saying that we're just going into the yard, I would assume that it's north, it's, this yard is actually a little bit further north of the station, like how it was back at North White Plains. And that actually leads me on to another thing I wanted to bring up, is the rather strange decision Dovetail made in terms of how short they, wanted to, they made this route. Dovetail, in the unlikely event that you're watching this, why did you think it was only okay to do a 24 mile section of an 82, of at least an 82 mile route? You lot really do confuse the hell out of me when it, when it, when it comes to deciding how long or short these routes are going to be and why they always end up being so insultingly short. So again, why is it only 24 miles long? Is it to do with like making sure that people's attention, like to, is it for people with short attention spans or, or what? 
Or is it just Dovetail being lazy? Like, I do genuinely want to know why. Buzz. 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 Well, that ruined the seriousness of this part, didn't it? Sounds like... That sounds like a robotic bee. Or... or a wasp. Though I don't like wasps. I like bees, though. Because honey is... honey is good. And so is the bees pollinating all the flowers. Well, not all the flowers, but you know what I mean. But, yeah, I mean, just back to this thing with Dovetail and their tendency to really make, to always make short routes for TSW, it's just, one of, the, it's, it really has, that, that, this tendency of theirs really has ticked me off. Um, because, the problem, I don't know if Dovetail has ever bothered to think of this. The problem with having really, really short routes is that they can potentially get very boring very quickly because all you're doing on these routes is essentially driving sort of different surfaces, potentially different services but still going over the same section of track several times over uh, like what's the worst example I can think of perhaps the uh, Tees Valley line for like the most linear English route and I think for uh, most linear American or North American routes, I'd probably say uh, CN Oakville subdivision, if anyone remembers that. And the, the, the thing is, it's, it's, it's not just a matter of like them, or these routes getting so short that, or being so short that they get boring after like maybe one or two rides or drives or whatever you want to call it. Um, These doors here don't seem to want to open. We can step outside and walk along the train, or walk along the side of the track. And um, yeah, so what I was what I was saying about the short roads is um, it's like surely again, surely even Dovetail would realise that they can get stale. What is? I'm just repeating myself at this point. <laughs> oh, press and, um, hold, press and hold for three seconds. Didn't notice that. Um, okay, what next? Now, it's very simple. But here's something that I don't know if anyone else has noticed. On the original Long Island Railroad M3 and M7 units, you can actually open these doors at the ends of each you get like married two car married pair and walk between the units and this has me left wondering um, why can you not do the same thing here you're not supposed to be you're not supposed to have downgrades on a newer version of the same product it's supposed to be improved because the nat because the nature of the beast is that you learn from your mistakes so that you don't to try and avoid repeating them in the future. So why is it, and that's, in the case of like being able to walk between married pairs, why has that gotten worse? Why has the functionality there got worse instead of getting, presumably, well, as the Beatles song says, getting better? Yes, I mean, dove, do, again, dovetail, what is your game? And no, that's not a, that's not a stupid pun, I should add. It is a serious question. Like, is it just because you know that there will still be people that buy it, or like without quest, without question? If anything, I'm probably going I'll probably get end up getting some comments saying like, words to the effect of, "Don't ask questions, just consume product, then get excited for next product." It's bound. That I know that there are still some people out out there that are like that. In which case. I remind you that people have the right people have the right to their own opinions and they can and if anything they should be able to set to maintain that right as long as they can as long as possible and so in that sense I am just well, me complaining about dovetails well some people well I suppose even I would consider it complaining I just 
want do I just want uh, Dovetail to be as good as they can possibly be. And by that I mean I want them to well not completely change their business model, but just do a much, much better job of providing a good add-on with essentially all the well, essentially pulling out all the stops, if you will. Where what I mean is like a decently long route, so something longer than fifty miles for once. And Sand Patch Grade doesn't count because it's only about 52 miles. And a decent AI system where it does feel realistically busy. In other words, avoiding or mis avoiding the mistakes made on the Long Island Railroad add-on. Seriously, if you drive along that thing, it feels like you're driving a rural branch line in the middle of Australia. There's that. There's so few trains on it. It's not funny. Well, not necessarily the middle of Australia, but a rural branch line in, like, I don't know, the South Island of New Zealand, for example. Like the old... Oh, well, the surviving portion of the Kingston branch that's used by the Kingston Flyer steam excursion with two AB-class 462 steam locomotives. Or... Um, what I'm saying is, I really don't like it when these routes are just... Well, when they're known for being so incredible, for being incredibly busy in real life, and yet the TSW version just doesn't do them justice at all. And as I say, it makes it look like a rural branch line in the middle of nowhere, when it's supposed to be a densely packed suburban rail system, going into the, going in and out of one of the biggest and most popular, most densely populated cities in the United States, or any big city for that matter, like well, London, for example. Because at least with the London commuter route, whilst that is still annoyingly linear and doesn't even doesn't even include West Croydon, which is so like it's it's not even two miles off the main line from Selhurst, for God's sake. And at the very least, while that route is annoyingly linear, it does still include a incredibly dense and busy. Uh, in timetable with uh, with over a thousand AI services, or well, timetable mode services, whatever you want to call it. Whereas this Harlem line doesn't even have 300. Mind you, I haven't checked. I haven't checked so far. Like uh, I haven't obviously for recorded that Ford and rail fanning video, so I don't really know how busy the route will be. But frankly, I would not be surprised if it turns out to be as underwhelmingly quiet or as underwhelming and unrealistically quiet as the LIRR was. And, yeah, no... That's how I think. Well... The way I see it, to try and fix... Or to try and get Dovetail to change their ways, although it'd be very difficult, is to essentially vote with your wallets. And it's a similar advice I've heard people give to try and... Combat against Hawkeye and their controversial antics. Of co but of course, if you know, if you know about Hornby's mess, you know. Like I'm not going to go into detail about it here. But essentially, well, my theory is that the only is that the reason why Dovetail still leaves so many half-assed aspects or features or whatever in the final product is because they know it, that they know that it'll still sell regardless of how good or bad it is. Um, I wonder if Armstrong Powerhouse run on the same mentality. Um, and so... What I'm getting at is... Like... Just... As if you're going to buy something, for, like an add-on from Dovetail Games, or any other third-party developer, really, that, list, that sells their products on Steam, do your research. I try to get as good and broad of an opinion, well, or not necessarily an opinion, but as good and broad of an idea as possible as to what you're getting, what you're potentially getting into before you, before you hand over your money. Because the, this, the, this really strange thing with TSW is that there's so many like good aspects to it, but at the same time there are so many 
what I might as well start calling dovetailisms. Uh, where there's like typical dovetail esque problems that have ended up in the final product. Like again, short, like very short routes, uh, missing uh, missing trains that should be or that are there in real life, etc., etc., etc. And I've realised that throughout all me ranting, um, that we've ma already made it to the end of the scenario. And um, I realised that most of what I was talking about wasn't really anything to do with the Harlem line, but uh, regardless, I do hope that you've enjoyed this video and have been able to tolerate me getting as annoyed as I did. And I um, hope you'll stick around for the other, for, th for this or for the other videos I've got coming out today and other Harlem Line videos I may do in the future. Right, take care everyone, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.